Hello, so in the third part I showed you how to put in some of the darker shadows. And for this one I'm going to start to work on some of the texture that there is in the skin. To do this I'm going to use a dart to create the skin texture and this will be used to emboss the texture into the paper. I have put a link in the description below to another video on how to make an embossing tool. In previous videos where I have created a fur texture, it can be quite a complicated pattern that is used to create the effect. Whereas for skin texture, it is quite a simple pattern that is used over the whole area. The pattern that I am embossing into the paper is basically a very tight figure of eight. 2B pencil is then applied by dabbing the pencil over the texture. It is important that the 2B pencil is blunt, so as not to go into the embossing. This will create a very flat looking texture that I can then build some of the detail over the top. When doing the texture, as you can see, I just do a little bit of the texture with the dart and then apply a little bit of tone with the pencil. It is important to only do little bits at a time because with the embossing, it is very difficult to see what you have done. So by doing small areas like this, you can quite easily keep track of what has been done and then simply apply the tone over the top. So that is some of the basic texture put in and now I can start to work on some of the detail. Using a sharp 4H pencil, I start by embossing in some of the wrinkles and the darker patterns. The part that I'm working on at the moment, the wrinkle is quite prominent and I just use the 4H to emboss this into the paper. This will also make it permanent. Moving on to the less prominent wrinkles, I now use a 2B pencil, but this time it has been sharpened slightly and I use it to just apply a little bit of tone using a quite random pattern. Although the 2B has been sharpened a bit, it is not what you would really call sharp, as a 2B will not hold a point for very long, or the tip could alternatively just break off. The 4H is then used to just emboss some of this tone down into the paper, before using the putty eraser to remove tone along the edge of the wrinkle. You can see by looking at the picture all the textures and marks that there are within it. From the texture of the skin to all the wrinkles and marks, it is always worth studying this before undertaking the area of the picture that you are going to work on. As I said earlier, the pattern that I am using for the skin will eventually cover most of the picture. The basic pattern is quite time consuming and repetitive compared to the fur texture where you would have changes in length and direction. Fur is a harder texture to create, but will cover an area slightly quicker. When creating texture, you want to think of it as two layers. The upper layer being the tone that is applied to the surface, and the lower layer being the texture that has been embossed in. Therefore, when you apply a blunt pencil like a 2B over a texture, the tone does not go down into the embossing. But when you want to add the wrinkles, the 4H pencil, which is sharp, but produces a faint tone, will pick up the darker tone that has been applied to the surface and will then emboss that down into the paper. And this can be used to create the finer wrinkles and patterns of the skin. You can always remove tone with the putty eraser quite easily, but if this has been embossed down into the paper with the 4H, this can be a lot more difficult to remove. I continue working between the different pencils, applying 2B for tone and then using the 4H to emboss the wrinkles. As I said previously, the 4H will emboss the darker tone into the paper. And when the putty eraser is then used over the top, it will only remove some of the surface tone and not touch what has been embossed in. If you are doing something like this for the first time, it is always a good idea to practice doing the texture on a piece of scrap paper first, as you can then find out how much pressure you need to apply to create the texture. You also want to make sure that you work on a hard smooth surface when doing this. You do not want a piece of paper or card underneath the picture that you are working on, 
as this will diminish the effectiveness of the embossing. If you want a good smooth surface to work on, something like MDF is ideal. And you can usually get off cuts of this at a very reasonable price from your local DIY store. If you find an area looks too harsh, you can simply use the blender to soften the look. Or alternatively, if you want to remove some of the tone from the wrinkles, simply roll a point on the end of the putty eraser and then press this down and it will remove some of the tone. You can see, I do not solely work in one area. I look for more prominent patterns in the picture, so I end up with various parts done, before filling in the gaps in between, and then all these parts will eventually merge together. The wrinkles in the top of the trunk are a lot thicker and more prominent, and that is what I will start to work on next time. As usual, I have put a link in the description below for the materials that I recommend. These are affiliate links, and I will earn a small commission on anything that is purchased. This is greatly appreciated as it really does help the channel to grow, and this is at no extra cost to you. Any questions, leave them in the comments section below, and I will do my best to answer them. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.